In this video, uh, I'm going to produce a part in Edgecam, a simple term part. Uh, but first of all, I'm going to create a model from it in uh, EWS um, and also in Part Modeler. So let's start by opening EWS. And this is the screen you're faced with. Just pick a line to start drawing. And you can immediately start drawing in this area. Um, you can see the length of the line as you're going, but what I tend to do is just draw the part as a sketch initially and then just add your dimensions afterwards and that way seems easier and quicker to me. So then we just click on dimension, dead easy to dimension and what you can do again, you can dimension it all over and then just um, when you've dimensioned it all over you can jump in and just uh, alter them all so I'm okay in these as I'm doing them even though I'm, I ain't even looking at what they are um, but it's quite easy then afterwards to just modify them up to the correct size um, dimension again meant to do that one there there so now we've got some dimensions on there. You can neaten this up at any time, stick them wherever you think they ought to be. I mean, really, I think they should be on that side. If I just close that, you can dead easy move these around. Just do that. Just click on it. Hold down your left mouse button. And you can drag it over to wherever you want, just to neaten it up. It's always good, because if you've got a mess on your screen, you can't really tell what on earth's going on. So, um, just going to neaten these up a bit. So that's meant to be 120. 60, that, these are actually what I want them to be, 20, 40. And then when I want to create this into a turn part, I want to revolve it. So I click this revolve, immediately twists it round like that. And it wants an axis. You just click on your axis and you OK that. And there you have it, your model. Um, you can add all other stuff to this. You can add your chamfers and your rads. So if we look at chamfer, um, that's like a 2 by 45 chamfer. Um, we'll stick some of them on. Apply that. Apply that. Apply that. You put some nice chamfers on there and the whole idea of this is you can work backwards you can actually go back and uh, if you click on this uh, the sketch icon there and this eyeball will take you so that you're looking down on this all the while always make sure that you're looking down on it because you can get really it can get really confusing um, if you don't do that right so what I'm going to do I'm going to just add a groove to this um, by um, if I go from there to there and to there and uh, then I can go to trimming so I can say uh, join which is where you join a line so I'm going to join that to that let's trim that nicely well I'm going to go uh, there and there and that's got rid of them and now I've got a groove I want to dimension it because it's just again been done on the fly so I'm going to go there to there and I'm going to that's 10 mil and then I can do obviously I can do it as a depth from here let's now dimension the rest of it I just want to dimension these lines here there and there. When you want to edit these dimensions, all we do is just double click it. So close that first, and then just double click on that dimension. Then you've got the choice to um, write a new value in there. And then just rebuild that. So there you have it. Yeah, so that as I said that brings you back to the actual drawing view and it's that arrow that arrow is the rebuild I think I skipped over that a bit quick there 
so that arrows the rebuild and what you have to do then is just click done and um, what it will do then is it just gives you a name so just say okay to that that's just saved your part your ews part and it takes you through to uh, edgecam and you just in edgecam just like you had a normal solid model in edgecam which you would then save so now i'm going to produce the same part this time i'm going to use part modeler so we start by drawing a line i'm going to draw a horizontal line and a vertical line what i'm going to do is dimension those this gives me a sort of sense of proportion because otherwise you could be producing this um, part uh, really tiny or you could be uh, producing it massive um, but if you get some idea of the proportion of the thing by dimensioning these first two lines before you start then you know that you work into roughly the same size so I've got these two lines which represent the outside of my shape and then I'm just going to do a continuous line this continuous sketch it's called um, and produce the rest of the shapes I'm doing that coming down producing my groove um, producing this next diameter down to this dot final diameter she'll be able to just latch onto there there and down there and then effectively I'm going to add the constraints to that so I'm going to do some vertical ones first I'm going to lock that one in which um, ends up at 35 there 35 then this one this comes in at 20 and then I can start to put these lengths in I can do this one here which is uh, going to be 40 this one which is going to be 30 you can change these afterwards exactly the same thing you just click on it um, 10 there then the depth of that which is switch here this one and we want that in at 3 and then what I'm going to do now is analyze that profile click this icon analyze program profile really useful tool because it tells you if you've got more than one open profile that means that there you've got other shapes on the screen which you probably don't want and um, so that's always going to be zero really and then you what you're looking for a closed profile if you've got an open profile then it won't build build this is telling you if there's any intersections which again is a bad thing it means lines are crossing which you don't want overlapping profiles you might have lines underneath that you can't see and this is showing you the number coincident constraints which shows that the parts all joined up coincident constraints are where things join together and then it's also telling me that there's loads of things that's under constrained um, and I need to I need to sort that out because uh, you're looking for a fully constrained model so what I'm going to do now is put some vertical constraints although these look vertical that, that all that's telling me is that um, there's already a vertical constraint you will get that because Edgecam does automatic constraints there's another one so they're all uh, vertical these should all be horizontal that's already done that's already done that's already done that one and that one okay so everything is constrained um, vertically and horizontally so let's do another analyze profile which tells us that we've still got 10 things that are not fully constrained well, all that means is that although this is in itself um, all dimensioned it's not fixed anywhere now that probably doesn't matter but in theory it should be fixed somewhere because it's actually floating around the screen so let's put it back where it was So we can create these uh, fixed constraints 
and then we can fix that line there and we can fix that line there so then when we check now we've got no nothing is under constraint so it's a perfect situation that is that's the uh, close profile close so that is a fully constrained model and the way to test a model is if you start trying to pull anything it just won't go so you can either twist things at angles or stretch them or whatever if you can do that then it isn't fully constrained so now let's do a uh, revolve and we want to select axis needs to be line the axis is a line we'll click that line there which then goes dotted like that you can preview it if you want but that looks great I'm going to OK that that's my shape I'm going to stick some chamfers on it now um, it's always a contention whether you want to draw these chamfers and rads at the drawing stage or you want to put them on at the end but something that's worth noting is that when you start adding construction planes if you want them to edges and you've got chamfers on sometimes those construction planes just it doesn't work out right and you end up extracting geometry and things like that so sometimes well i think that it's always a good idea to leave it right till the end to put all these chamfers and rads and things on I'm going to use offset and angle so I'm putting two mil chamfers on at 45 degrees I'm applying that putting one there I'll put one there and um, I won't bother with the back okay and that's my part so all I need to do then is uh, just save that part so now we're going to move on into edge cam we can use either the EWS model, in which case we'd already be in EdgeCam, or we can use this part modeler file. First thing it would do is ask us to save it, but if it's already saved, then it won't. This is the EdgeCam link, so it's going to take me straight through to EdgeCam. It opens up EdgeCam um, with this model in it should open in a turning session because it knows that this is a turn part recognizes it puts the datum in the correct place select a material um, so that uh, edgecam can calculate your feeds and speeds for you and then fit some stock so we we'll use the fit stock and this is calculated what stock it thinks would be suitable so mill on the front face 25 on the back face and I'm going to make the diameter of the stock 125 so that's my bit of stock that I've ended up with it automatically puts this on the stock layer then I'm going to create a machine machine I'm going to create is um, this uh, sample lathe two axis millimeters that looks like it'll be all right and it places my part in the chop you can play around with these jaws and get them all the right size and everything can't be bothered at the moment but it is something that I recommend that you do because what you don't want to do is um, collide with your chuck jaws that's one of the massive advantage of EdCam in that it can tell you if you're about to uh, clobber these uh, chuck jaws so what we're going to do then is we're going to do a feature find so we're going to find the features that we want to machine so we want the turn profiles the front face profiles we don't want the back we want grooves we've got no threads and we've got no bores so we'll okay that and it's come up with all these features um, and having got those features what we'll do then is we'll go in and we'll plan it so we we'll go to machine and we say plan what it does then is it comes up with a plan it's saying it's going to rough the front face rough rough the front turn rough the, uh, the front groove finish the front groove finish the front face finish turn sounds good to me so I'm going to let it get on with it and I'm going to say apply 
when I say apply it's now in the process of generating all the edge cam information that we need so beaver in a way and um, doing all that in the background rough turn finish turn should do all the grooving and everything and you'll see all these ticks when it's finally uh, complete I'm going to go into simulator now let's put this in a nice view and let's see what we get So it's facing it, rough turn, speed some of this up now. Any collisions, it'll glow red, it'll tell us that we've got a bit of a problem. So that's the roughing tool, and it's going to come in with the first grooving tool. Groove this out. Now it's coming in with the finish grooving tool and it comes in with a finish turning tool which it faces, turns, finish turns, way it goes. Job done. So now let's produce some CNC code. We just click the uh, NC code and then click generate NC code work our way through these boxes and then we get the code and that looks really good obviously it's the time you spend on your post processor that gets this exactly as you want it to be when it goes into your machine and that would go into that CNC lathe and run perfectly